uh, when it comes to like conducting, kind of, we've been working on like, kind of movement while playing to conduct as a group. Hey, did you play for your director? Um, no, we did not. Because normally in a quartet, you set the first and second outside edges, and the very interior costume. Okay. Just for future reference. Okay. Okay. So you want to put the leads on the end, and then the tenor very across from each other because it's going to work for better balance and for better listening mm -hmm. um, because you were lost. Not lost literally, but your sound a lot of times was not was not projected the way you needed to project. You're going to hear the bottom. You're going to hear that voice. Your, your sound is not going to come out as much as it needs to come out for the blending purposes. So that's why we always stick it the first against each other, the first and second alto, those voices. Okay, so make sure for a future, you want to put, you want to sit as a square, okay, okay or stand as a square more so, and you, you, it would even be better if you would just switch places with him when you're performing, okay, and that would just make it a little bit more for toning, toning purposes to be able to hear that, okay, you guys play really, really well, you do, you do really, really well, I need you just to make sure that when the style changes, that when the style changes, like it goes to staccato, that you really overdo the staccato dynamic, the staccato, um, make it shorter so that it bounces more, okay? Um, measure 28 has a retard in it, and I want you to overdo it. It says it's a little bit of a retard, but there was none there. And that's going to come from the first, because you have the eighth notes. Whoever has the most notes gets to do the, gets to do the, the leading of the retard. So all of your, and there was another one at 43, and that's going to come from the berry, because guess who has the eighth notes? That would be you. And they all stop. So you can do as much as you want. Okay? So you can drag as much as you want before the all tempo, and they're just going to listen, and that's one of those times where you can kind of conduct it with your head. And they'll know that that's when they're supposed to breathe to come back in. Okay? It's not a problem. 35 was nice, but you guys did it 35. With those little decrescendos, mm -hmm. that was very, very nice. Your dynamic contrast was very, very nice. Be really careful, though. Who has a melody at C? It's okay. Somebody can answer. <laughs> Do we know? Okay. Have you guys looked at this part? A little bit. A little bit. The yeah. very sax player has a melody. Okay. So we want to make sure we know so that we don't cover. Because all the, if you look at the score, it's, a, it's a like... It's a dead giveaway. It's a dead giveaway. Everybody's part says pianissimo, forte. So if you, all you had to do was look at the score. Pianissimo, forte. So you can't tell by looking at your own part. However, if you look at the score, yeah, it's like gibberish to you otherwise. But if you look at the score, then you'll be like, oh, okay, she's got it, so we need to listen. And that's why your, your, your director in regular band class will go, shh. So be real careful as you're playing that you go, okay, because there's other times when all of you guys are supposed to be playing loud because it's just a full lot. So make sure that you don't cover up who's got whatever part. Because the rest of the time your dynamics were really good. But you're eating on your right for the wrong thing. You know that, right? The balance at 97 between the first and the and the berry, make sure that it stays there. Okay? The berry. You know, again, that's just looking. And having the two of you play together, because you played it fine, you played it fine. However, it wasn't balanced between because the octave. You're going to jump. Why? Because if you hear your higher pitches easier than you hear lower pitches, that means you have to play louder. So you seem like you're playing as loud as he is, because he has the advantage because he's in the upper register. So that's just the, the physics of our instruments. You do that, it'll, it'll just make it all that much better. All right? Nice job at the end. One of you guys tenor. <coughs> Made that accord at the end as it happens. You all change together. You change on count three, you change on count four if you watch the recording. Okay. It was a nice little transition. It was like one, three, four, one. But it's not, it's on three. Okay, so make sure you change it on three. Or mark it as four that you're doing your own interpretation. Okay? Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.